the topic under discussion is HIV virus. This lecture will be made super easy in just four points. The very first one, introduction to the HIV virus. And the second point will be about the understanding of this particular term, enveloped retrovirus. Why HIV is named as enveloped retrovirus. And we'll come to know about number of terms. Coming to the next point. Third. In the third point, we'll be talking about the structure of this particular HIV virus. And in the fourth point, we'll discuss the replication or the life cycle of this HIV virus. Coming to the first point, HIV introduction. Okay, the first point. H stands for human, I stands for immunodeficiency, and V stands for the virus. So, human immunodeficiency virus, such kind of virus that attacks a human and makes the immune system weak. What happens then if our immune system becomes weak? Very simple. If any antigen means the pathogen, if it's entering into the body, then our immune system is no more able to fight against a particular antigen. Very specifically about against that pathogen. Second point, this HIV virus is named as enveloped retrovirus. Enveloped is a very easy term, such kind of virus which is having envelope. Second term, retro. Why HIV is named as retrovirus? This is named because of a specific enzyme named as reverse transcriptase. We'll discuss this and the structure once again but before we move towards the structure we need to have a little bit of understanding about this enzyme and we do have a number of other enzymes available here along with this reverse transcriptase cut coming to the point what happens and what is the job of this reverse transcriptase let's know simply you guys know this very well that dna is responsible to produce rna Baminophen enzyme transcriptase. Okay. What happens? This virus, when it moves inside the cell of the human being, more specifically, when this virus enters the immune cells of the human body. Okay. What is seen there? Very simple. The conversion of the RNA into DNA. That is actually done by the help of this enzyme named as reverse transcriptase. Now, why this enzyme is named as reverse transcriptase? Very simple. We got the concept that there is an enzyme uh, which is supposed to transcribe DNA into RNA. And uh, that enzyme was transcriptase. Now, what is happening? From the RNA, DNA is synthesized. So, simple. When RNA is converted back into the DNA, or you can say when there is the synthesis of the DNA from the RNA, RNA is going to synthesize DNA. This mechanism is done by an enzyme that is also transcriptase, but that is doing the reverse job, means that is doing reverse transcription, that is actually converting RNA into DNA. So because of this particular function, reverse mechanism, this enzyme is named as reverse transcriptase, because it's doing reverse transcription, very simple. From the RNA, DNA is synthesized. So, because of this particular mechanism, this virus is named as retrovirus, okay? So, HIV virus is actually an enveloped RNA retrovirus. Got the concept? Very simple. Now, let's come towards the third point. That is the structure of the human immunodeficiency virus. I will explain the structure from the core to the external surface. In the core, in the internal, there is actually an RNA, not a single RNA, two, one, two. And along with that, there is an enzyme, known as reverse transcriptase. I told you guys in the beginning, here is not just only one enzyme, here are enzymes available, okay? Enzymes, examples like antigrase, protease, etc. We'll explain all when we come to the point and that is the replication or life cycle which is actually the fourth point coming to the point again third one 
Here in the core we have RNA, RNA, two single strains RNA. Along with that, there is what reverse transcriptase. First of all, just focus on this enzyme. Then we have a covering named as capsid, which is actually a protein layer. And collectively, RNA plus capsid, they are named as nucleocapsid. Now, where this term comes from? Very simple. RNA is named as nucleic acid. We have two types of nucleic acids, RNA and DNA. So, in short, RNA is a nucleic acid, okay? Take the term nucleo from the RNA and merge that into the capsid. So, it becomes nucleocapsid. In short, nucleocapsid is actually a collective name of the RNA and capsid. Very simple. Next point is here, the matrix protein, which is actually the next layer that covers this entire nucleocapsid, which is named as matrix protein, again, made up of protein. And the third layer that covers both the capsid and the matrix protein that is named as envelope. And this is made up of the lipid by layer. Now, this is the very point that this virus actually gets this envelope from the host cell. Suppose a virus entered inside the host cell when it is replicating, when it is moving out back. In the meanwhile, it takes the membrane from this host cell, and that is actually the envelope. Okay, lipid bilayer. And the next thing that we see is the GP spikes. Number of GP spikes available, and covering the entire outer surface of this enveloped RNA retrovirus. Okay. GP spikes, again, it is a protein named as glycoprotein. Like this, the third point is cleared and covered. Now let's move towards the fourth, that is the replication or the life cycle of this HIV virus. This virus uses its this glycoprotein spike and it finds the receptor on particular immune cell. Now, this is the macrophage, okay? On this particular macrophage, there is a receptor for this spike. Now is CD4 receptor. So this spike will find that receptor and after that there will be the endocytosis of this virus. Means this virus will move inside human immune system's cell. Now this virus will come inside the cell. Here this virus will start uncoating. After the uncoating what will happen? It's genetic material that will start moving out. Here is the RNA along with that there is the reverse transcriptase available. Now here is the point because of which this is named is enveloped retrovirus. Reverse transcriptase. Now it's time to show the action. This virus will synthesize DNA from this particular RNA by means of reverse transcription. We call it the concept reverse transcription is the synthesis of the DNA from the RNA by means of reverse transcriptase enzyme a reverse transcription okay what will happen then a DNA will be synthesized after that the same retrovirus will degrade will do the degradation of this particular RNA now this RNA is no more available what will happen the same retrovirus will come again and it will interact with this DNA and it will synthesize a next DNA named as complementary DNA. Now these both the DNA will fuse together. After that they will start moving. Now this is the fused DNA and it will start moving into the nucleus. Now here again another enzyme named as integrase which is also a viral enzyme okay now this viral enzyme will integrate will fuse this DNA which is coming from the virus side and the host DNA these both will fuse together and one long DNA will be synthesized one DNA which is having both the host and the viral DNA viral DNA came from the virus which was having the RNA and that synthesized the DNA from its RNA. Now that DNA and the host DNA both will integrate. After this integration, now this DNA is free to transcribe. Means it's free to synthesize messenger RNA. There are several logics available here to explain the synthesis of the virus RNA and these protein. One very logical logic is that here, during the transcription, two types of the RNA will be synthesized. RNA number one, that is 
the viral RNA. Okay, viral RNA. And second RNA will be the messenger RNA. Such kind of RNA which will be having information to synthesize all those protein which are needed for the virus. Like integrase, reverse transcriptase, capsid proteins, matrix protein, GP spikes, etc. Got the concept? This is the very logical logic which I got from several books. Okay, this is very interesting logic. From the same DNA, during the transcription, there will be the synthesis of two RNA, viral RNA and messenger RNA, which is having the messages that will come to the ribosomes and here it will be translated to synthesize required proteins, which I explained a moment earlier. Then this RNA and those proteins will start assembling. After that, there will be packaging, assembling, then packaging, then specific specific proteins and RNA will start packing in each particular what matrix proteins okay packing will be done first of all RNA will become then captured then matrix protein will surround and at the end when they are releasing they will take their envelope from this macrophage or you can say from the immune cell or you can say from the host cell that's done so what will happen assembly then packaging then releasing okay as it releases again, now this virus is again free to go and find another cell and infect that cell and again starts synthesizing more viruses. And they will again go and will find another cell. Like this, the cycle will continue. And that's it all. If you still have a question, drop it in the comment box.